Oof. My name's Neil, this is Real Life Architecture, and this morning I'm doing a collaboration with another person on TikTok. This is Microhouse Scotland. Over the last three years, he has self-built a microhouse in the back garden of his home in Edinburgh. We got chatting on TikTok and he invited me around to see his project in person, and I learned a lot. For anyone thinking about self-building in the UK, this guy's channel is a must-watch. He's a scientist and has no previous construction industry experience. The amount of research and attention to detail Microhouse Scotland did for this project is staggering. He is building this to Passive House standards, which will become the norm in Scotland for all new build homes from April this year and across the entire UK in the near future. I will get to the construction costs at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that, but we started by discussing the insulation. And as soon as you've got those gaps there, if this is ventilated this side, yeah. it opens the ventilation right up to the inside around, and this stops it from going further into your cavity. I would only use PIR again if I used a product like these again. The project should be finished later this year, and after a walk round, we had a look at the documentation and drawings. The project began by building the microhouse in 3D software to understand how it all went together before building it in reality. All this is available for download on the Microhouse Scotland website, but I was blown away because he did all of this himself. This took an immense amount of work to put this together yeah. with everything all separate like this. You know, you can go through here and yeah, there's your add one thing in at a time and, and yeah. see how it interacts. And I mean, that's how I would do it if I was to do this. None of it's perfect. The foundations of the micro house are very unusual. He used Spirofix ground anchors. I have never used these and I wanted to know how it was done, starting with how the engineer certified the structure. So you, your engineer must have had some sort of, I mean, I know you said form Q has been used on this. And what form Q means is that the engineer will set a set of criteria for how something in your building is going to be installed. But you have to prove after the fact that it has been installed to those criteria. Yeah. And then a form Q was given to the council for the final certification. There's your ground screw. So it's yeah. a terrifying implement when you look at that. I had the whole floor constructed and you could push the thing and it would wobble side to side because these just bend. Right. What, what, once, they, once they're all together in a big structure like that, they bend and move. Okay. But by the time you've got a whole building on them, they yeah. don't anymore. The inertia there's so much the weight on, yes. on them, they yeah. don't move anymore. Right. But I had to go deep into the build with this wobbly building where I was like, should I, should I stop? Jesus, what? <laughs> okay. But I just had faith that it would be all good in the end, yeah. and it was. I fully understand why this was used for the foundations because you've got that tree and the tree has roots. And if you put a conventional uh, strip foundation or slab foundation, then you'll kill the tree. So this solves a very particular problem. Yeah, and most screw piles course. are screwed in. Yeah, These look like, they look more like screws than most screw piles, but they're hammered in. Right, so you just drive them down from the bottom. Yeah, you just hammer it down right. with a demolition hammer. Do, 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 right. And then it screws itself in, you know, yeah. just by the, by the shape and size of and it. And you can leave the final adjustment uh yeah yeah you can but you shouldn't really ever i don't think you should ever screw it out right because you've made a hole and then you're ah, screwing it out of the hole so it's just going to go back into yeah, the hole again yeah, yeah. so you, you should only screw it out if you're removing it yeah entirely so i I just tapped them down until they were at perfect height and didn't i didn't, mess didn't unscrew any of them but you know I, I, the other advantage will of course be time mm. and, and cost you're not putting tons of concrete literally tons of concrete into a hole in the ground you're doing yeah. it this way so you could your material cost and your time cost will come way down. Yeah, and maybe environmentally yes. these are better yeah, as well. Yeah, from a carbon because, point of view. Yeah, from a yeah. carbon point of view. I don't know if that's the case because... I strongly suspect it is. Steel, the production of all that steel. Uh, well, you'd have steel in the foundation anyway. Would you? No, you absolutely would, yeah. No, uh, you, you don't just pour concrete in the ground. You put in this... Uh, a, a oh, yeah, the, 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 the reinforcement. So there's yeah, always steel. So. There's always steel yeah. in there. Like yeah, I guess so, yeah. So it's probably a lot less yeah. overall. Uh, yeah. The other, the one thing I will say is, you, you know, you, your only encounter with the construction industry has been the supply side. The merchants are selling you materials and products, right? Because right. I very rarely ever deal with self-builders. Mm. If I'm dealing with anyone self-building, they're usually managing a contractor. Right, you know, they, right. they will they will hire people and do right. and do that, but they're not actually doing it themselves. Well, there'll be a video I post in the next week or so that that talk, that I'll where I'll talk about why I did this and yeah. what led me to this point. Uh, and it's basically cowboy builders that led me to this point. Okay. I've had a lot of cowboy builders in my lifetime. I've, I've used them, I've used tradesmen maybe ten times, and probably seven or eight of them were cowboys. See, there's my cost. So it's more than I said. That's so far. 
Right. <laughs> and it's not the sum total that's, uh, that's, uh, that's quite something. It's the, it's the level of detail. You've actually got the nails. That is some spreadsheet. I, I mean, I've seen quantities of errors and estimators put together bills of quantities for, for like much larger buildings than yours with far less detail. So that's, that's quite something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm including every single thing in here, like cladding screws, yeah. 28 by 98. Yeah. Th that's actually probably getting on half the cost is like, just bits and pieces. Ancillary bits of stuff yeah. to connect things. It is, and people just, people don't realize that. And you've got all these tapes, you've got sealant, you know, yeah. expanding foam, you've, like you said, nails, different, you know, weird little screws for the cladding, yeah. conduits, gravel, you know, you've all this <laughs> stuff. Um, that's a fantastic level of detail. Um, if I go into waste of money, I'm pretty... Yeah. You've got, you've got <laughs> part of the spreadsheet has waste of money written into it. This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. So you've got... Money. The tree survey was a complete waste of money. The yeah. digger hired because uh, I like digging, so that was a waste of money. <laughs> I should have done it by hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So all, that, that's your figure. That's the top line number you've got to so far for material supply. Yeah, for material supply only. Yeah. But, you, you, yeah. If you hired a, a company to do it, they would add the same again in labor. And some of yeah, them but they the probably would have got a lot of these materials for a lot cheaper because. And you've included VAT in that as well. So. Yeah, this is all with VAT. So in common practice in construction is to just exclude VAT. Because right. VAT can be changed at and, and a moment's notice by the uh, Treasury. Right, okay, so, that makes sense. So you would have the figure X VAT. I'm back in the office now, and Micro House Scotland and I had far more to discuss than would actually fit on this video. But we've decided to do further collaborations in the future, including a question and answer session. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. And if you want advice about altering or extending a home anywhere in the UK, remember you can book a consultation with me on the reallifearchitecture.co.uk website. Remember to read the terms and conditions before you book.